Hello everybody and welcome to the pit complex here at the LaSalle International Circuit at Doha in Qatar. We are here for the rebirth of the beast, the Beast 2.0, the KTM 1290 Super Duke R. So since exploding onto the scene in 2014, KTM's had an absolute weapon on its hands. But I mean, 1301cc engine, V-twin obviously being KTM, an amazing chassis. But the best thing about this bike is KTM haven't stood on their laurels. They've gone to work, they've made a brand new bike, and it all starts with the engine. The 177 horsepower KTM 1290 Super Duke R gets new lightweight titanium intake valves, a slightly reworked combustion chamber, new pistons, compression up to 13.6 to 1 and a 500 RPM higher rev ceiling. The intake funnels are now shorter and there's also intake resonator chambers mounted directly on the cylinder head, all helping to give a smoother low RPM throttle response. The 1301cc engine, I mean it's an absolute powerhouse. This is one of, the, one of my favourite engines ever. I absolutely love the thing. You can pull fifth gear wheelies on this thing. Jeremy McWilliams has been doing them down the straight. But the engine's so user friendly. That's what's deceiving about this bike is it just has such a forgiving nature to it. On the track, that smoother throttle that you get just off the bottom of the, bottom of the rev range, particularly around sort of three, 4,000 RPM, that's a really welcome feature on this new bike. I mean, I have, a, I actually own a 1290 Super Duke, a first generation one, and this one is much more, it's just a little bit nicer, just when you crack the throttle open when you're right on the side of the tire. Much of this also comes down to KTM's adoption of some serious electronic work. The new Super Duke gets three different throttle maps like before, but a new nine stage traction control system, cornering ABS, anti-wheelie, launch control, cruise control, tyre pressure monitoring and optional extras like motor slip regulation to reduce the chances of the rear wheel locking up under braking and a quick shifter. All of which is accessed by a new TFT display digital dash. The dash itself changes colour as well when you're, when you're actually riding at night time and that makes life a hell of a lot easier as, as you all know. Uh, but this bike's really been brought forward now to the competition like the Aprilia uh, Chuano 1100 and, and also the Yamaha FC10. Ergonomically, the Super Duke R has been, for me, probably my favourite bike out of the current naked bike range. It's very roomy, you can ride these things absolutely all day, but uh, they've made this thing a little bit more sporty. So for 2017, they've moved the bars a little bit further, uh, cl closer towards the right, I should say, and also a little bit further down. Now, for me, I don't notice too much of a deal, a big deal. It's not like it's an enormous change. The original bike was fantastic to begin with. As for the chassis, there's not too many changes between this and the first generation machine. The frame is still a standard steel trellis, although KTM's suspension partner WP has fitted heavier fork springs and a heavier shock spring to give the KTM Super Duke a bit more track prowess. Aesthetically, the KTM is headlined by a reworked LED headlight and two new colour schemes, orange wheels on the white model and a now exposed subframe that looks absolutely tough as nails. And if you want to take your Super Duke R to the next level, KTM's got you covered. KTM's got a serious collection of power parts available for this bike. Now, we've already had a go on a power parts equipped race bike with Dunlop Slicks, uh, WP uh, power parts kit suspension as well. And look, it's as good as it sounds, it really is. They, the bike just transforms itself from being you know, a capable road bike really to a full on racer. It feels absolutely spot on. And when you're going around somewhere like LaSalle, it feels absolutely fantastic. Obviously we've had guys like Jeremy McWilliams and Chris Fillmore dial these bikes in. So we've had very good guys that have set the bikes up for us. So we're pretty spoiled in that regard. This thing, as when it came out in 20, at the end of 2013, start of 2014, it was awesome. Yeah, no questions asked. It was a fantastic bike. It really shocked everybody when it came out. 
and it's just as good, if not better now. Those new electronics have really smoothed things out, made it a lot more adjustable to, and you can tailor the ride a little bit more now to how you want how you want the bike to be. Obviously, with your different throttle modes, you get into the track mode, you have different throttle modes within the track mode. So there's all kinds of ways you can program this bike to be your ideal Super Duke. But I'll tell you, if you haven't gone for a ride on a Super Duke car, do yourself a favor and get out there and have a go. These things are just absolutely awesome.